when you threw a fly in one of those holes in Back Bay in the 50s, it was like rolling a wine bottle into a jail cell. I mean, something was going to grab it right away. First cast across that bed, whack. I fished largemouth bass all over the United States, but I never saw bass fishing as good as it was in Back Bay in those days. Mike Smith, how you doing, man? It's Corey Roof down at Virginia Beach. Look, man, I remember you were telling me a long time ago that you grew up around here and you were fishing back bay back in the heyday when people were catching the big fish. Got a lot of good intel coming out there. The water's nice and clear. I was there last week doing water quality monitoring. Saw a lot of bass boats on the water, man, so I think we need to get out there after it. Mike grew up in Virginia Beach, and so he was telling me stories about how he used to fish in Back Bay, and then, you know, he kind of saw it fall off. I remember the, catching fish on Back Bay back in the 70s, and you, a two pound fish would get down in the grass, and just couldn't get it out of the grass. Yep. I was like pulling out a 10 pound fish, and it was loaded with like eight pounds of grass. Things have changed a lot. tackle was, it didn't make any difference. The fish, there's so many fish there. We had a lousy tackle and we're still catching fish. I actually saw a red-winged blackbird land on a cattail out there and a damn big bass tried to grab him. A 30 or 40, 50 bass day was not uncommon. At one time it had the most citation largemouth bass in the country uh, for several years. This is where you would catch them. It, was a paradise. I fished Treasure Lake in Cuba, what's supposed to be one of the greatest fishing lakes. I fished there when Castro, a week after he took over the revolution. And Back Bay was better than Treasure Lake, which was located in the Bay of Pigs area and was an incredible bass fishery. But Back Bay really was the best largemouth bass fishing I've ever fished anywhere. Bass clubs from New Jersey, uh, Delaware, Pennsylvania, Maryland came down. Harold had to open up his cornfield to a parking lot. If you know Back Bay today, it did not resemble anything like Back Bay in those days. Back Bay then was shallow. It was impossible to run an outboard motor in it because it simply had too much grass. Back in the day, this grass was so thick that the water quality scientists that I worked with could not get to this by boat. They would actually have to fly in an airplane and go to the six different stations all over Back Bay and pick up a water sample from the pontoon of a float plane. I've never seen more moccasins anywhere. They are meaner than a bad mother-in-law. I mean, they, they will not get out of the way. 1978 or 79, but a hurricane came through there. A hurricane put a lot of salt water back and it flooded the bay pretty badly. The water so much had gone up into the flats and the cornfields and things. What happened to the herbicide when the water got high and the marsh drains and drained back into the lake and killed every damn blade of grass in there? Literally in, it seemed like months, the grass almost all that disappeared. I caught bass down there from the time the hurricane killed all the grass until 1981. 81, I never went back pretty close. The last day I went down there, I couldn't catch bass to save my foot. It destroyed that fishery. All our fisheries at that time were 
They were so plentiful. Everybody thought they people. I remember I was an outdoor writer writing columns in Maryland in the 50s. And I was a little concerned about we ought to do a better job of taking care of our smallmouth bass. Our fishery biologist, who was uh, the, one of the top smallmouth men in the country at that time, I was talking about the Potomac River and we ought to have some kind of conservation methods. And he told me that sport fishing could never affect the populations of a river as big as the Potomac. Well, we know now differently that that's not true. I think everybody that's concerned about the bay would all agree that there were multiple things happening at the same time. People were catching and keeping a lot of fish. That's the bottom line. Unfortunately, there were poor farming practices at the time, a lot of runoff, a lot of sedimentation. And the other thing, which is definitely the pink elephant in the room, is there was some saltwater pumping going on in the bay. There was artificial in introduction of seawater into Back Bay with good intentions but with poor results. The juvenile bass production was being eliminated. When, when water reaches over one part per thousand, essentially bass eggs can't survive. Even the best intentions can really not work in our favor. Everybody's got their different idea of what the problem was and when it comes down to it, they were all right. <laughs> they just were all right at the same time. It's like a fist. This is this is how I think of this, is that, you know, a finger itself can't really hurt somebody. But when we put everything together into a fist, I think just what happened is it all came together and it just punched Back Bay for a knockout. And it's going to take our helping hand, not the fist, to pick it back up and get it where it belongs. One of the first citizens-driven uh, organizations that, that was specifically started to help Back Bay was the Back Bay Restoration Foundation. My dad was one of the first ones, pretty much just a bunch of local folks that knew the bay was going downhill and, and wanted to do something about it. They realized that if, they, if somebody didn't do something quick, this thing was just going to turn into a mud hole. And that's what it did initially. Um, when, they, when they first figured they needed to do something, and formed the organization, the Back Bay Restoration Foundation, it was a mud hole. The fish had left, the ducks didn't come back anymore, there just wasn't anything around. It had a lot of siltation, a lot, gets a lot of runoff from Virginia Beach from Dam Neck and all that stuff. So finally they installed a weir there to stop that runoff and it actually has made the water quality here on North Bay a lot better. For three consecutive years, we stocked largemouth bass fingerlings uh, in Back Bay, about 125,000 fingerling bass per year. What we've seen are excellent results. The, the hatchery bass have done great, but more importantly, natural reproduction has been through the roof. We're starting to see things that, that, that we haven't seen before. Back Bay National Wildlife Refuge has bought up a lot of land and turned it back into its pristine state. Uh, we're, we've, got, we've got wild turkeys around here now, and we, we haven't had wild turkeys since colonial times. Hopefully, uh, hopefully in the next few years, we'll see it recover where it can really hold, hold itself. I think everybody would agree Bass fishing is as good as it's been on Back Bay now than it's been and probably since, you know, the, the 80s. Uh, the, numbers, the, the numbers are certainly increasing. Size is increasing. You gotta remember that takes time. That's not something that happens overnight. Um, but we're seeing big improvements in the fishery and hopefully that's a sign of things to come. I think we got a real glimpse at what 
Back Bay used to be. We're seeing grass come back. We're seeing fish come back for sure. It has a potential to become the world-class fishery that it was. To maintain this balance, you have to respect your natural resources. You have to nurture them. I mean, like a child, I mean, they have to be fostered and, and guided by us. If we're not gonna let them be in their natural state like they were before humans were there, um, we need to be mindful of the changes that we make. We do so many things in this country that are detrimental to our environment. We've lived in a land which is so bountiful that we thought nothing could ever change it. We really need to make a lot of changes if we're going to survive.